Um, welcome everyone to this community call tonight. Um, my name is Cassandra Blanchet. I'm one of the co-founders here at Zero Waste Design Online. I'm also the community activator and community education lead here. Um, we're very excited about tonight's community call. Um, we're welcoming Mos Mosin Sajid um, to talk to us about his um, his collection, Nothing Goes to Waste, um, his Zero Waste Adam collection. So just going to talk about a few kind of housekeeping things um, and some updates in Zero Waste Design Online before we hand over to, to Mosin. So um, some practical information here. Please keep your microphone muted uh, unless you're speaking. You can um, feel free to use the chat function and one of us will all be on there the whole time. We'll be sharing some links as we go along. Um, but please use the chat function if you have questions while most is presenting. Um, we can try and answer those or we'll bring them up during the Q&A at the end. Um, and when we get to the end, as I mentioned, will be a Q&A and you'll be able to use the kind of raise hand icon at that point for asking questions as well. Um, we recommend using the kind of side by side Zoom setting during the presentation just for optimal viewing. Um, and also the community call is being recorded and the replay will be made available afterwards. Um, but if your video is on and you prefer it not to be part of the recording, um, please feel free to turn that off now. Lastly, uh, you can make use of the closed captioning at the bottom of your screen. Um, you just have to enable it. And if you need any help with that, just pop your questions into um, the chat function. Just some quick community guidelines. Um, as always, we want this to be a friendly and tolerant community space that's safe, safe for everyone. Um, we want this space to be a place where we can come together and learn from one another. And we aim to create a community space where everyone's welcome, accepted, and valued for their knowledge, skills, background, and experience equally. Um, and as always, we would just want to say thank you to those who support us through our membership. Danielle is just going to pop a little link. If you're interested in learning more about our membership, you can support us for as little as two euros a month to get um, access to lots of extra perks, including a monthly raffle. Um, next month, we're going to be raffling a denim jacket. Denim? There we go. Uh, from Regine Denim, which is a really great zero waste um, denim brand here in Glasgow, where I am. Um, so we'll maybe pop a little link into Regine Denim as well, so you can have a look if you'd like. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, just a little update on our funding. Uh, we mentioned last time that we received a 12,000 euro um, grant from Sircox, and we have now started that. Um, Milan and I um, have started kind of a coaching program as well as mentorship and workshops and we're going to kind of keep you updated about that as things go um, and kind of share some of our learnings as well. Um, now I've just realized I forgot the poll. I'm just going to quickly launch a poll while I'm speaking if you can answer in the background. We're always just interested to know who you are, where are you joining from. Um, so we're just asking a bit about your background, whether you're a designer, industry, home sewer, student, academic, ed educator, um, or you can, if, if you fall into like another category, you can enter that into the chat. Um, but I'm just going to launch that. And while I kind of finish up this bit, if you can answer, um, that just helps us in knowing who you are. Um, just as part, before I finish up with the Sircox update, we just wanted to say a very big thank you to Katrine, who was our intern last autumn. She's the one that worked on the application for this um, for this fund. And so we're really, really grateful for all the time that she put into it because it was successful. <laughs> so um, thank you, Katrine. Um, and on that note, we also wanted just to thank Mari Lowe, who's been working for us over the last year. Um, lovely smiley face. <laughs> um, she's been our, uh, content creator and digital marketer um, and she's done an incredible job of providing really great content to you through kind of socials and helping with um, community calls etc so um, we're currently transitioning Mari um, out of the role to she's going to kind of um, be focusing on some other things um, to do with um, systems change um, she's a systems uh, practitioner so um, we're really excited for what Mari is up to and on that note um, we're actually going to introduce Hillary, who is our new community activator. Yay. <laughs> I thought so, it took uh, half an hour ago. <laughs> so yeah, I'll pass it over to Hilly just to say a quick hello. 
Hi, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, really excited to come on to the team. And um, it's amazing to see the, the community um, in these community calls already. Um, we start, yeah, pretty much started this week. So it's exciting to see the, the support for the, um, the team here. Um, I a bit of background very quickly. Um, I'm sort of more of a I come from a bit of a policy background and community um, working with com Common Objective and Fashion Roundtable most recently, um, sort of um, human rights policy background around um, uh, sustainability in the fashion industry and, and from that side and um, yeah really excited to come onto the team and um, yeah what um, help build the community here. Super. Thanks Hilary. I'm very very excited to have Hilary as well so you'll be hearing lots from her in the coming weeks and stuff on Instagram and other platforms so um, welcome Hilary. Just as a wee reminder as well, we launched our community directory, which we're also very excited about, um, last at our last um, community call. And Danielle is just going to pop a link in. We would absolutely love for you to add yourself to the community directory. This is open to anyone from any background who just wants to kind of connect with other zero waste designers or home sewers, researchers, academics, educators around the world. So um, Mohsin, you add yourself as well. I will do, <laughs> um, for sure. Yeah, but if everyone here, um, please do add yourself to the directory and um, as well as the directory we have our, we now have our zero waste pattern library. Um, again, anyone with a downloadable zero waste pattern can add their pattern to the library and we're looking to kind of build um, the go to space for zero waste patterns. Um, so again, Danielle I'll just put those links in the chat if you're interested, if you've got something to add. Um, and before I hand it over to Mosin, just a quick update. And again, we'll pop this link into the chat. Our next community call is about building community and networks. So it's so specifically going to be about kind of get, getting to know you more, the, you getting to know each other more. We're going to have some breakout rooms um, and have some conversations and kind of networking time. I kind of hate that word, but for lack of a better word. Um, yeah, get to know each other a bit more. So that's the next community call. That's on April 17th. 7 to 8 p.m. CET. Um, so we hope to see you there. So yeah, we're really excited for uh, Mosin to join us and to talk about his collection. He's the owner and creative director at Endrime. To any, and tonight we're going to be exploring his Nothing Goes to Waste collaborative zero waste denim collection. Um, we're going to learn about his kind of forward thinking industry collaboration with Endrime, which is his Endrime. Sorry, it's Endrime, right? Yeah, Endrime. Yeah, yeah. Endrime. Um, <laughs> collaboration with Cone Denim and Genealogia as well, who um, I think there's some reps from those companies or brands here tonight as well. So I'll get to pass it over to Mosin and then, um, and just to let you know, we're gonna keep the main content to the hour, kind of main hour of tonight, but we can stay on longer for the Q and A. So if the kind of content ends up taking a bit longer, um, we'll make space kind of Q and A time afterwards. So we won't be running away. We'll hopefully be able to answer all your questions. Um, so, Mosin, take over. Thank you uh, so, so much. Um, so, just want to say uh, thank you for, for letting us do this. This project is, is one of the, I think it's, I've been a denim designer for 20 years, and um, this has probably been one of the most exciting projects I've done. I've done many exciting projects every season. And it's super hello, hello. I'm, my name's Mosin. I'm a denim designer. I've been a denim designer for 20 years. I've, I've worked um, a lot for really big, big brands. Um, name a denim company. I've probably consulted for them or worked for them. That's not even a joke uh, now. Um, uh, people don't really believe half the things that my company or my wife and me have done, but that's how it is. Um, but but we've been friends with Cone Denim, which is actually this collaboration wouldn't have even, even started without our friends at Cone. And Cone are the original OG denim company. Uh, they, they invented half of the tech technologies that we use in our denim world now. And they're still, and they're still innovating and they're still going strong. And I've been friends with Cone since the beginning of my 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 like career, and um, on and off we've done lots of work for them and projects for them, and I visited them in like Greensboro and and all and all over the world. And we um, I they asked me, is there a project you would like to do? And I said I wouldn't mind exploring zero waste. Now, obviously, I, I know a little bit about it, and I know there's a couple of really important zero waste people here, but I know the. I, when I when when I thought zero waste at the time, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, the, the garments might not, not look that exciting. So my objective was to design a very commercial collection with a zero waste philosophy, using using some of the most sustainable fabrics ever made. Like to be to, to 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 be honest. So that's why we went to. That's why I pitched it to Cone. Cone said yes, and then Cone very kindly uh, and like Prayer is here from Cone, and they very kindly sent over. I think about nine different fabrics. There were different whips. And that's obviously the that's obviously the constraints that I found that I have a perfect pattern for one, 
before I try and use the same pattern on another fabric, it, it's, you have to start again. So it's, it's, there's lots of drawbacks, but these are just, these are just like design things that we have to get, uh, get over personally. And, and then obviously designing a collection, you can't just design a collection. You need to also finish it and wash it. Not everyone buys raw garments. So we got our friends at like Genealogia who are experts at sustainable finishing to uh, literally, and literally you don't have to tell them what to do there. They got their own archives, they're experts. They've been doing this for years and years. So they already had the fabrics to hand. They had treated them, they had tested them. So they knew the shrinkages and then their artisan designers decided, did lots of nice treatments on these garments. So it's, and then we use sustainable trims and it was awesome, absolutely awesome. So I'm just gonna um, play a short video. It's about a minute and a half long. Okay, so let's start with the let's start with the. I've got two PDFs. One's uh, created by my wife, which is awesome, and one's created by me. And I'm gonna bomb. I'm gonna bomb through them. And uh, the idea is um, keep your questions, and then at the end we can talk about it. I'll be talking about the processes. I'm gonna introduce our, also our friends from like from like Gene Logic and Cone to, to to speak as well. So when the slide comes, I might ask them a, ask them a question. So let's do this. So I'm gonna play. Um, my wife's PDF first, which should be nice. Hopefully you guys can see this all. Right, yo. So it was a complete honor doing this collection. And actually I always wanted to do a commercial collection, but I didn't want it to look like a zero waste collection. I know it's a dumb thing I'm saying, but I don't want people, to, I don't want that to be the main reason. I want people to look at it and go, that's cool. And then realize, oh shit, it, it's, no, it's, it's kind of hardly, no, hardly no waste. And, and I, we were very careful actually about um, how we worded the collection, because the idea at the beginning was that it was a zero waste philosophy, but then we found out during the process that actually some of these garments were, were still a tiny bit of waste, like we're talking about an A5 sheet amount left over or something. So if I had more time, of course, we would explore to reduce that. But it was a really, and, 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 not, and this type of collection, it, 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 we put the same amount of energy that we would do in these nine pieces, than we were in a 30 piece collection. So most of the work actually was done on the pattern stage, which is quite, in, quite interesting. But then as to the, the sewing stage was actually quite straightforward. It wasn't, it wasn't too, too, like, too like dissimilar. And things that we did also was, our, we were all very conscious of, of not to use a, a hardly no polyester inside the garment. So even with the interlining, we didn't use it. All our buttons and trims were like removable. I used X bar tacks and circle bar tacks where possible. And then of course, um, it was just a complete breath of fresh air and all the buttons that we used, we had them developed so they, they could be screwed off. So it, it's just, um, uh, it's just a, a, a concept collection that a Levi's or someone would see in a cone showroom. And then it, all it is that I get, I'm quite lucky to design concept collections that other people get inspired by. And it's an awesome thing to do because I don't have to necessarily worry about sell through figures or what worked last season. And I think um, it's really beautiful. So this is some of the pieces that, um, that were sustainably finished by like by like Genealogia. And uh, I think I think um, I think uh, Victoria is on the call here. Maybe she wants to tell us briefly about some of these 
uh, sustainable work sort of finishes. So like Saul of Victoria, if you're there, please say. <laughs> yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Hi everyone. Hi Motion, thank you for introducing uh, this beautiful collection. I'm still shocking. I'm so happy to, to see the video and to see the garments. Yeah. And also thank you to Beret, Gon and you to choose the idea for all the finishings. Because uh, for us, the zero waste philosophy is truly important as experts on finishing. Um, for us, through the technology, we are just trying to, to show the industry possibilities of, of being able to reduce chemicals, water, and waste as much as possible, as you did with uh, your patterns. I also saw on your on your patterns that, as you mentioned, the steel and small um, yellow area from the waste, and this is also what is happening when when we are uh, washing uh, garments or finishing those that we are still uh, need chemicals and water, but our aim is to reduce it as much as possible, and this is what we make with uh, with those garments. Uh, we try to reduce all the steps in order to get this vintage look. So um, those those garments that we are sewing now uh, are, mm, the jacket is one of my favorite because, because it's, it, it came uh, prepared for tying. And let's say that um, we were able to, to choose how, is, how it was gonna end up. And we wanted to create something like uh, vintage with a low waste of water because for dyeing we, we need a huge amount of, of water made in the process. And we, we try to reduce it as much as possible with uh, one of our new technologies, um, which is the color box and we made it. And then we, we took uh, a small part of color as, as we saw on the back, it's more visible um, with, uh, with the awesome. And then for the, for the, for the jeans, uh, it looks like so complicated to make but it was easy. We use a technology that is, um, uh, let's say it's applying, instead of having a bath, like with tons of water and chemicals, it's just, let's say a cloud that is applying uh, like in small nano bubbles with only the chemical need to, to finish the garment. So this is what, what we do on these, um, these two particular garments. Nice. Well, well, there's more slides coming up. So are we gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna invite Pret on the next PDF about the, the fabrics. Hopefully she's still with us. But a little bit about these garments. Yeah, like they look like it looks like a normal chore jacket and a normal five pocket, but actually there's if you see there's actually like darts on this style. Um both styles were selvage, which is very much easier. I found actually um are doing a zero waste philosophy on selvage a lot more comfortable. But we got wide but wide wide garments as well coming, but as I said, it's more interesting adding color rather than taking away color. So it was quite interesting for the guys at Genealogia, but we'll move, move on. So this is the trucker jacket as well. There's more, more pictures of this coming up soon. And this is based on a type two, so Levi style based from the fifties. But the way we enhanced it, it was selvage. We had selvage down, going down one of the sleeves. We had darts on the, on the shoulders. And then obviously this pant here, we use circle bar tacks and it's hardly no waste in it too. But yeah, and then the shirt style was awesome. That's actually based off a Levi shirt from the 1870s. And I've always known that they did zero waste back, back in the day. So I revisited it and tweaked it slightly. And that was using one of the chambray like sort of like qualities. And then the more outerwear and st inspired style, um, we use X bar tax and then there's darts as well. Hard to see on this picture, but in the ones coming up next, you will actually 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 like, see, see them. So that's the end of this PDF quickly. And now we're gonna go over to the to the master monster piece sort of PDF. So which is uh, which is I think uh, hopefully gonna explain a lot more about this collection. And we'll learn more about it. So let's just see. Oh, I don't know if, if it's sharing. Can you see that, guys? Hopefully, you can. I don't think you can. Wait there. Um, not yet. Not yet. No worries. It's okay. I'll just get it open now. Oh, bear with me a second. One second, one second. Just lost my link. So just bear with me one second. So yeah, it was a, such an awesome collection to do, and I was very, very, very honoured to actually do it. So let's just get this open now. Okay, cool. Found it again. So now I'm going to share my screen. Apologies, guys, for that. Okay, I'm going to make it full screen, and off, off, off we go. So. 
this collection wouldn't, wouldn't it be possible without our friends at Cone and like Gene Logia. They were, they, they were from the beginning at the beginning of this entire side process. So that, and then um, uh, it's just me and my wife really who designed it all. And then our friends at Cone helped with the fabric and they picked out some of the most awesome fabrics they've ever, ever done. And it was such, I really wanted to explain the process of how this production was done. So we actually documented the entire process knowing that we were gonna share it. So that was the whole key. And, and as I said, there's not many opportunities where you get to design collections like this and be given the time to do it. So, you know, and I was only, I only allocated a short amount of time. I think we allocated only 10 garments or nine garments we got to make, but this is one of the trucker jackets. And this one's probably one of the most successful garments in the collection and uh, very proud. You can, you can see clearly here that I've put darts in on sort of unusual places. We had, we did a single stitch that caught every seam. We used buttons that were fully, um, you could take, 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 sort of, sort of, take them off and it was awesome. And I encouraged lots of skewing and all, all the little mistakes that you normally find. And so yeah, that was the collection at the beginning. So that's that's our kind of a mini press flight release. Cool. And then, so we all know, just so I know most of the guys on this call know, but zero waste isn't anything really new. It's been around for, 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 for it's been around from the, you know, for, for a very, very long, long time. And there's obviously um, examples of it from like kimono shirts or sort of like, sort of like kimono styles to obviously Western garments to shirts too as well. But our friends at Cone, they also did a lot of, did, did like a lot of it as well. They got an archive as well, and they got um, a collection called their found collection. And a lot of their shirt pieces were also zero waste. So it was a nice link to Cone from their early history, especially from the thirties and like sort of, sort of like forties. If any of you get, get hold of this book, you should, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And these garments are amazing because you can see actually the braces and the, and the suspenders from, from, the, from, the sun, from the sun bleaching, which is quite, quite awesome. But zero waste to me, again, isn't really new. And I've been, I've been talking about it for many years to all of my students. This is the earliest known garment, a mummified garment that they found, and it's zero waste, which is quite awesome. So, um, you know, they took it apart, they reverse engineered it, and it was completely zero, zero waste. So it's, it's nothing new that we're, we're exploring. And, and, and as our friends, at, at like, sort of like Danielle and sort of Holly that are here and, and, and everyone else knows, you know, fabrics are extremely expensive to make, labor intensive to make, to take ages. Why on earth would you cut them and leave 20 to 30% on, on the cutting room floor? It doesn't really make sense. So our friends in the past knew this and they tried to incorporate as much of the fabric as possible in, in the garment, knowing that it could have, have a second use later. So a bit like borrow garments or whatever in like Japan, many people like to, sort of, of, of like treasure fabrics and we don't really treasure fabrics as much as we should, we should do. Um, the more examples here, this is a kimono that I've got and this is something that I stole off like Danielle, one of, one of, these, one of these sort of Italian designers that did this more sort of a one piece style. So it's nothing new that we're exploring here but how did we tackle it in, in, this, in this collection? So this is one of the first styles and we, we briefly touched, it, touched upon it on the earlier PDF and it was using 100% cotton and it was a selvage style. So it was really, really cool. And, um, you know, and it was all, you know, again, washed by like, you know, it also had a very low e, sort of EIM score. In, in the field of washing, um, we're now, uh, um, especially denim designers and any designers that wash garments, we're, we're very much um, conscious about how much energy we're using after the garments we made, how much processing, how much chemicals. So uh, our friends at Genology have a really great scoring system. So um, you can get very high ratings where you use bleach and all the rest of it, but they try So anything with a low rating is actually completely amazing. So this one got a low rating and, and our friend uh, Vittoria has already briefly touched upon it. I don't know, I don't know, Perrette, if you want to touch upon the fabric here, if you want to jump in before you leave us, do you want to? Yes, I'll, I'll um, talk a bit about this fabric. Thank you, Mosin, and okay. nice to be here with everyone. Uh, so the fabric that Mosin used here is part of um, what Cohen calls our community collection. So um, we developed it about a year ago. We align with causes. Um, we choose a different cause a year. And this one um, is aligned with water.org, uh, which brings um, clean water globally um, to places that are underprivileged. So uh, the selvage ID is a teal selvage. So that um, ties together with water.org. And then this fabric actually starts out undyed. So there is no, um, it's an ecru fabric um, comprised of cotton and refibra. So again, trying to use circular fibers, um, refibra being um, an amazing one. And then it kind of adds to this sort of like plush hand and it has just like a really chunky to a line. So really beautiful aesthetic details from the fabric side. And then, you know, made with um, ingredients that will allow the fabric, uh, the garment to degrade eventually and um, connecting it to our community cause water.org. Um, Amazing. So, so that is a, 
a bit about the fabric. No, just just so our friends are quite clear. If they, some of our friends don't know what like sort of like refiber is, it's basically recycled cotton mixed in with tensile lyre cell and then blended together. And then obviously this got this fabric here also uses cotton too, right? So, it. so yes. it's mm -hmm. um, fully biodegradable, which is awesome. And yeah, and uh, a percentage of it is also like, also like refibro, which is awesome. So yes. yeah, you, can, you can see when I made this style, I was very conscious about, I'm, I'm one of these crazy designers. I've been like this from the beginning. I hate overlocking. I'm not that keen on it. So I try my hardest to avoid it. So this style, it was like a walk in a park. I put a one piece fly in. I put darts in where I could to help it be a better shape. Even use clean po clean pocketing and even use binding on the side side seam. And just for added measure, I, I also use circle bar tacks where a rivet would go. So awesome, awesome. Uh, extremely happy with it. And let's just move on to the next one. So you can see more of it here. It's just fine. And also some, of, I think there might have been a tiny bit of fabric left over and our friends at, at, at La Genealogia used it as a patch for the breakage, which is awesome. So, you know, that, that was quite cool as well. So yeah, very good, very good. And lots of nice repairs here. And I, I encourage skewing and all this manipulation. So I, I believe I used um, the same fabric at the bottom and it shrunk and it created more skewing. So I, I love creating all these de defects and we used a Jack Rock, Jack Rocky paper, uh, the, the recycled paper, and we, we we just hand stamped the low, low logo on. Obviously, if this was for a, a proper brand, they'll use an ink that wouldn't disappear after one wash, whatever. And uh, you can see some of the darts here on the bottom with the chain stitch hem, which gave it that roping effect. So all our denim heads will look at this with eyes open going, wow, it's got that magical roping effect as well. So it, it, I think it, it ticked most of the boxes of all of them. And this is the pattern for that garment. So as I said, I was all about sharing it. I believe in sharing everything that we're doing. I, I don't think it's a perfect pattern, but by God, but you know, I think it was not, not bad going really. And so we, I, I did something that you shouldn't normally do. I, I put the front panel, of the wearer's right and then the back panel of the wearer's right opposite sides i've been taught in tailoring never never to do that and i put everything else like sort of like in between including the pocket bags and and i use also did the pocket bags too which you normally use uh, another fab fabric for and i put the belt loops in one piece fly waist waist waistband too you can see where the darts are but the clever thing that i did i was actually really proud of at the time was because i knew this was going to be a mirror image i put the coin pocket where the scoop would go. Literally the shape of the scoop was the coin pocket. And as it's a mirror image, you'd cut that coin pocket out. So extremely happy with this pattern. And the tiny, and all the only wastage here is really the bits that are in yellow. So if we had more time, more energy, I'm sure someone could probably spend two minutes and actually correct, correct this pattern, which is awesome. And you could in theory grade it up slightly, but then that's the thing I found, this is perfect for a 32, but the moment you get a 38 or you go down to 20, 28, then you have to completely do a new pattern. So that's the, I wouldn't say drawback, it's more of a design, it's just a design problem. And whether or not there's an algorithm that can do that, I think there could, there could be. So, you know, awesome. So I'm really happy with that one. So it's gonna move on now. This is the chore jacket. This was obviously our friend, like, sort of like Victoria at Genealogy briefly touched upon this as well. You're using the same fabric as, as, as the pant as well. And what I did here, um, any opportunity to use the selvage, I do. I personally like hiding my selvage. 20 years ago, I would have shown it off and have it all over the front. But now I've become a bit more reserved. I like it when uh, you find it, like a like, little like surprise. So we got it going down the center back. We use ring buttons that could uh, be taken off, which is awesome. Um, and then you can see it clearly here. And then uh, we got also uh, Tencel um, labels made and they used um, plant-based inks to print it from our friends at like Javid Brothers, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, awesome. I, I'm really proud of this. And yeah, I, I believe I, I, I agree with like Victoria. This is probably one of my fav, favorite styles as well. So yeah, very nicely done. I was really happy with it. And lovely little defects happened. Obviously, I had selvage going down the side. And uh, obviously, because it's such a quite a, a, a boxy pattern, I folded it in on itself. And then, you know, so I did things that you don't normally do, but it looks so cool. So really good. And then, yeah, so you know, I, lots of things you shouldn't do. And here's the pattern for it. So the bits that are yellow, again, are the wastage. So not bad going. I, I put darts in the most strangest places. I'm like a frustrated a women's wear designer. So I, I put two darts up the sleeve. I cut the sleeve. It was a three piece pattern, but I've merged it all into all, all into one. I've got a dart here, a dart there, and a dart there. I put a dart down the down the back as well. And, and you know, it was just awesome. But the only bits that are yellow are the bits that are slight wastage, unfortunately. Hence why it's not, we're not calling it a zero waste pattern. It's a zero waste philosophy. Um, trucker jacket these these i think i'm really proud of and and lucky for me our friends at cone 
had given me two fabrics that were the same width, which is a complete bonus, because it means I can do two versions of the same style without having to do any major alteration on the pattern. Um, so let's bring in um, our friend Prep first of all, and maybe she can tell us briefly about this fabric. If she's still with us, that's it. I don't know if she is. Oh, maybe not. She, yeah, she is actually I think she had to left. Uh, no, oh, she's left. Okay, don't worry. Then we're going to go straight over to like Victoria at La Genealogia, and then she can tell us a little bit more about this this particular wash that 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 her team did. Yeah, um, and here in uh, World for this jacket, we we wanted to keep, um, let's say, um, super simple look, but um, giving just the waist on the on the particular areas by using the laser. So as when you saw these high and lows and different shades on the jackets, we use the laser technology to to fade down the color, and then the wash was pretty simple. And also the fabric was uh, giving us this, this amazing character. So the word, let's say, was um, simple for me. <laughs> and the look is uh, really cool in general. Uh, the aim score, as uh, Moshin was mentioned before, is important uh, for us because it's uh, helping us to measure uh, the impact of the washing in the industry. So it's giving us particular information about uh, water consumption, the energy consumption, and also the chemicals that we are using. From, from this number, we are able to, to improve and to measure what we are doing. So for this jacket, um, let's say, uh, it's uh, giving us an amazing result by itself. Indeed, indeed it is. And something that I forgot to mention right at the beginning, um, we were also we also used AE thread. We used their 100% cotton range. So we were very conscious. Most collections that are made in the world in denim, is in like particular, they use a lot of polyester in in their thread mainly for strength. But now there's been a lot more newer technology with longer staple cotton. So you can obviously use uh, cotton thread now. But obviously we still have to be a bit conscious about it. If you use cotton thread, it's not advisable to just throw tons of bleach on it and treat it like it's a polyester thread. So if you're going to do a sustainable collection like this you need to actually do sustainable finishes as well, to be honest, because otherwise it's not, a, it's not a drop and drop like replacement having all these sustainable attributes. You have to be quite careful how you treat them. So anyway, so awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, here's a, here's a close up of it now. And yeah, I was extremely, extremely happy with this style. Uh, it's a mixture of, it's obviously based on a type two from the, from the fifties. I added a cinch cause that's, I love, love, love like cinches. And um, it was awesome because we used the selvage in such a cool way. We had it on the facing, we had it on also going down the sleeve. And then you can see here quite clearly I put darts in areas that you wouldn't normally put darts, but I think it looked quite cool really. I think it actually worked with the style. Otherwise it will end up being quite boxy. So yeah, it's all super clean and I love, I love how it looked. And there's, there's a cinch buckle too and chain stitch construction like, throughout as well, especially when in areas where we need it. So it's quite cool, especially on like the, on, like, the hem. And, um, and lots of hidden selvage, as I said, I love hiding things. Mm -hmm. So if you open up the pocket bag, Goodness me, not only is the pocket selvage, the flaps are also selvage and it's all quite hidden. So nicely done. And then I added the circle bar tack, which is actually based off a Wrangler style, which is awesome, called the 11MZ, I believe. It's a very famous jacket which has had circle dot dot tacks. So I am um, just for this project, which is quite nuts. I bought a machine that cost about three and a half grand just to do that circle bar tack. So that's the commitment that I did. So it's quite awesome. You can clearly see the screw on buttons here that we, we got developed from our friends at Jarvid Brothers. So it's it's been so rewarding doing a project like this because you, you're going to go into it doing zero waste. So you, you push yourself more to thinking, what else can I do that's more circular and better? So you end up developing things that you wouldn't normally develop. So it's easier to just use the available button you used last season, but to go a bit extra mile and to push yourself to say, let's design a new label that's fully biodegradable and let's design a button that can be fully taken off is quite a, a, quite a lovely thing to, to be able to do. And you can see some of the dark manipulation here and the little secret pocket on the inside too. And here's the pattern for that trucker jacket. So some yellow, but not bad going. Actually, what I found was this, this is actually the collar piece here. I actually ended up hiding a lot of the waste in the collar. Now I remember I spoke, I did speak to Danielle about this while I was designing this. I briefly had a chat with her on WhatsApp and I said to her, I'm hiding a lot of waste inside the garment. She goes, well, I don't know if that's a good idea. So it, it, it's, everyone's got their own train of thought really on, on, on what you should do with some of this waste, whether or not it gets cut off and used somewhere else or whether you can actually incorporate it into, into the pattern. So I was in the mindset of trying to, to have as less waste as possible. That was my, my thought theory behind it. And you can see on the, on the front yokes, you've got the darts here. 
tiny bit of waist out to do and obviously around the collar i didn't know how to get around that and tiny bit on the back of the armhole but hey i think that's not not bad going and this used the entire width so all the selvage was used no, nothing was wasted it was all incorporated in the garment very cool and then this is the other version of it as well this is using the water water selvage that cone had had, had also like developed um which is awesome and luckily for me this fabric was also um the same width as the other one so i just literally just cut it out again twice um Victoria, do you want to briefly talk about this fabric? Obviously, um, I mean, this wash, this had a very low rating, which is quite amazing. Yeah, super briefly. Uh, basically, that uh, we are not only focusing on replacing the bad chemicals in the industry, but we are also focusing on avoiding the bad uh, practices. One of them is the use of pumice stones, and we figure out a process that is uh, substituting these procedures. So we are using now the the ozone and our technologies to achieve this kind of huge, let's say more um, aggressive vintage look uh, in combination with, with the laser for sure. I think it's amazing that you can achieve all these whisker marks and you can get it down to this level and still have a look very low rating. So that's not bad going. And that obviously is, that's because of the atmospheric and all these other other tech tech of other technologies that you've done on, on this garment, including the laser. So not bad going. So something makes you think you can get a level like this but your fabrics the important thing is anyone here who's who who picks fabrics and does treatments all of these fabrics that cone had developed were all laser friendly as well so they had developed them in a way that they could wear down quite quickly with little amount of, of treatment so you can't just pick any fabric and hope you get this result you have to also design the fabrics with the chemical with the chemicals but the dyes that you use that and all you know it's a lot of effort goes into designing a fabric like this which is laser friendly so quite interesting mm -hmm. doing stuff like this so let's move on so here's my close-up of it and yeah pretty much the same as the other uh, the, the other one it's quite awesome and now we're going to move on to the other parts and that's the same same pattern again so now we're on to the other five pocket collection so this garment was quite interesting and this used a um this was using stretch obviously in the world of denim not everything is 100 percent rigid I don't think most people even wear rigid anymore to be honest it's quite i do but i'm a particular denim person i think everyone i speak to they want that comfort they want that slight one percent so we have to accommodate for that if you're going to do a zero waste collection unfortunately i say unfortunately you have to think about stretch so that was my personal opinion so for me it was quite interesting doing it and obviously when you do stretch garments you can treat them in pretty much the same way uh, stretch denim in particular has come into come, come into its own literally you can design stretch denim now which doesn't even look like it's stretch which is awesome like 15 20 years ago that wasn't e even the case so these fabrics that were actually developed they look quite awesome, raw and washed. So it's quite awesome. It just happens to have that slight comfort in, which is awesome. Uh, this was 100% cotton with 1% spandex as well. Um, you can see I've got the one piece fly. I've got the typical end rhyme sort of like details, circle bar tacks throughout. So, and um, I was very not precious about it. I, I didn't mind making small mistakes. I think I look at a lot of garments from the 30s and 40s when they were mass produced, the golden era, as people say. These garments were made super fast and you see all these tiny little mistakes. So. I, whenever I make stuff, I have that slight slain nut philosophy, which is quite awesome. So, and then obviously because it was treated, there's that nice roping effect from the Union Special 43200G. And this is the pattern for it. Now, is it successful? I'm not too sure. Obviously this was a wider fabric. So I managed to fit all the legs across it. I managed to put the pocket bag in it. And I think, you know, the, the fabric that was left over was probably, I don't know, between an A4 and an A3 sheet. So I was slightly disappointed. And obviously this for me is something, and, and um, you know, this particular fabric was a certain width, but I tried my bit, it was 85 cm width. So it's interesting to see, obviously, um, how was I successful? I'm not sure, but it's interesting to, to you know, this is, a, this is a project that needs to be carried on by loads of people with all different widths. And hopefully we can get to some understanding or some way of making a pant that looks like a pant that uses, that hardly, has hardly no yellow left, left, left over. So, now we're onto the shirt. This is awesome. This is a one by one canvas. Um, um, what's amazing, these sort of qualities are the original fabrics, actually. If, if you look at really old denim collections from the 1870s up until the, up until the early 1900s, nine, 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 a lot of them were one by ones, two by ones, three by ones came a little, a little bit later. So it's quite awesome. So this is based off a Levi shirt, which literally I looked at very, 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 very carefully. And um, it was 100% cotton. And um, I kept it raw actually, which is quite, quite awesome. So um, I, I love um, lots of workwear details that people do, especially from the past. So this had 
the chain stitch runoff. This is actually a very Jewish thing. So uh, early um, uh, Jewish garments in particular, remember all of these workwear garments were Jewish immigrant tailoring in like origin. They were, you know, so they, they put all these details in their garments. So this garment in particular with the chain stitch run runoff, it like represents, you know, they, they have them all on their shirts and it has lots of like religious, like sort of like a meaning, meaning towards it. So it's nice to see these details on workwear garments and knowing where the, where, the, where, where the password comes from. So I was quite happy to incorporate that into, in, 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 into the garment. Even with the pockets here, the front pockets, I made sure they were just squared. I just, I just, I, I just folded them in. And yeah, circle bar tacks throughout, little misstitches, tiny little mistakes from the twin needle. And again, use the circle, use the buttons as well. So quite awesome. And this one, you know, some wastage, but it, it's, I've done versions of this same style with no wastage. And I think the original, original shirt was based off a selvage garment. But this particular fabric that I was given wasn't selvage. So if it was selvage, I probably could have eliminated mostly all of it. I believe I could. So it was, it was an attempt. There was some wastage at the end. I think we used some, we used some of it for an extra pocket later. But yeah, quite awesome. And now we're on to the Modal Indigo. So I don't know if you guys know in the world of technology and spinning, um, there's, there's many ways to actually dye yarn now. Obviously the old method is ring dyeing. We have lots of big vats and the indigo, the, the, the warp yarns go in and they dry them and they dry them and they keep on, keep on, put, keep on dipping them and they coat the yarn and the inside of it is still uh, white, which is quite awesome. But this is a slightly different method. So this yarn is actually um, tensile mo modal. So uh, it's using a tensile, ten, 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 tensile process, but in the dope dyeing stage, so when they get the wood fiber and they break it down and then they add their, they add their solvents and it becomes like a, glo a gloopy uh, honey-like liquid. When this honey-like liquid is in that state, they actually put indigo dye in it then. And then they, then they extract it through like spinnerets and they make, 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 uh, they make the yarn. But this process of dyeing, 99% water savings, 99% heat savings, 99% energy savings goodness me it's unbelievable so actually uh, our friends at 10 10 cell they they released this last year and they got cone denim and a couple of other other denim mills to explore it so this is one of the first fabrics that cone did with that um actual fiber which is awesome so um unbelievable water savings on just this sort of it's all our fabric, it's all our fabric which is amazing and it will stretch too so nothing too like dissimilar to the other garment that i just did obviously it was another five 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 pocket I have my denim history buttons on, which is funny. And even with the chain stitch buttonholes. And yeah, it's very nice. And I thought that's not bad going. So this is the actual, actual fabric. Obviously, because it's not as, not as wide as the other one, it's 146 cm, I managed to squeeze in nearly everything. So I was quite proud of that. I'm, I think no more bigger than an A4 piece of paper was left over, which isn't bad going really. And you can see the, see the dart that I put on the, on, on the back yoke as well, which is quite sort, quite sort of cool. So not bad going, not much to wear. And then, then uh, this is using um, the cottonwood fabric from Cones. This is the workwear style. Obviously, when I design collections, I often look at the fabric and I'm like, oh, that'll be good for a workwear jacket. Or so that's how I design. I don't do my sketches first. I look at the fabric and get inspired what will come. So for me, it was like this fabric, I wanted to do a workwear inspired style. So that obviously lent to more slanted pockets. It had a grown on waistband. Um, it had different kind of pockets on the back. Um, this one was raw, so sorry, our friends at like Genealogy didn't get to wash it. I believe, I believe, like Victoria, you did wash this garment, but I didn't include photos in this in this PDF. So apologies for for for, for that. But really beautiful. Use ecru stitching. I put I, I I love clean construction, so I put the the, um, the tailor belt loops on the top of the waistbands. I did a one piece fly, of course. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome. Did a little tool pocket too. Uh, I love this style. And then, um, yeah, was it successful? Not sure about this one. I was like semi okay about it, but I was like, mm, that, you know, for me, uh, I could have made the style longer, of course, that would be one way around it. And I could have eased, could have eased in the front panel to the back one. There are ways that I could have like manipulated it, um, but I didn't. So there could be many ways I can do it. And now we're onto our hemp style. So I've, I, I do this now all the time. When I get anything hemp related, I go a bit mad and start putting hemp, hemp leaves over it. So, um, so I just do it for fun but it's become like a running joke now. And whenever I do a hemp garment. Um, so this one was using organic cotton and hemp, which is awesome by our friends at sort of cone. It's the, it's they call it the, the like, sort of like freshman style. So it's a three by one like fabric, but it's using hemp, which is awesome. I don't know if you guys know, hemp is, is unbelievable actually with its water, sa water savings, with its antimicrobial and antibacterial um, things as well. And it's just had such a bad rap for the last hundred years, you know, ever since the 1920s, it was pretty much banned 
and mostly because of 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 of, of like proper of like propaganda from our cotton friends. But luckily, since the eighties, it's become a bit more reasonable. We've been growing it again, and obviously now because of the THCs and all the other things, all the all the medical sort of benefits, sort of benefits. Now we've got access to the yarn again. So there's a new type called um, there's an old type called wet spun, and a newer 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 type called cotton called cottonized. I believe they used a cottonized hemp for this garment, which is still awesome. So again, I did a continuous stitch of the cotton uh, of the um, hemp leaf. Uh, this style I did overlock, so I went against the, my own rule. I thought, let's overlock this style because I wanted to do a collection where, if a normal brand saw it, they could say, "Hey, we could we could still do this style." So I was conscious of that too. And then I use a cinch buckle, which is awesome, and one piece fly as standard, and then the screw on buttons as well. This pattern was it successful? Eh, so so. I'm sure our friends uh, in this like in in a zero waste like sort of collective are gonna are gonna like grill me, which I can't wait. I can't wait for. But I thought not bad going. Imagine if everyone did a collection like this, the wastage would be less. It would be quite awesome, right? So that's how I thought about it. And then this is an unfinished style that I attempt tempted to do, and I didn't. I I, I I had one more fabric, or I wanted to do another fabric in the selvage, but I ran out of time. But I still shared my uh, my my thoughts how I could do it. And then um, all the threads, as I said, were designed by our friends at so A and E, which is awesome. And um, which is also like Gottman in 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 like Europe. And I always do little exercises like this whenever I get any thread and I know what fabric I'm using. I put all my colors against it to see which color I think would look well. It's like a, it's only because I'm 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 actually colorblind, so I do this to really help really help me. So I create tools to help me when I'm working. And then uh, yeah, there's lots of other videos about me working on this process, but. Uh, I think that's the end of me talking at the moment. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And, and thank you so much for like Victoria to, to join us. But I'm sure if any of you guys have got questions for me and Victoria, or, or if, if Pret's joined us again for Pret, now's the time. So yeah, go for it. So you can feel free if you'd like to just speak up and ask a question, or you can use the raise hand function, or you can put your question in the chat and um, I can repeat it for you. There is actually a question, just there's one, um, a question, could you mention the water saving method again for the hemp and cotton trousers? Oh, okay, sure, sure. So I've actually, I've actually, I've been an advocate of hemp for maybe more, more than five years. Most of our Pakistani denim mills are using hemp probably because of me because I've been shouting about it for so so long. Um, it got le got legalized in Pakistan only two years ago. It's the next biggest innovation that's going to happen in the denim world. If not, it's already happening now, and we're only at the start of it. So hemp has been around for uh, more than uh, ten to eight thousand years. They they we've known about it. We've been using hemp earlier than like cotton, but and and actually we're known in the West. We know know about it for rigging and shipping. But actually, it's used in lots and lots of things. And, and, but, and we've been using it, using it for a very, very long, long time. It was only because of the artificial pricing from cotton, from slavery, that we stopped using really hemp. So 1700s, 1800s, it, it, like, it, it like kind of like declined. Then the cotton people put the nail, nail on the coffin when they basically banned it together with like cannabis in the 1920s. So for only recently, from the 80s, we've started to use it again. But all the technology to spinning and spinning hemp they just use cotton like machinery to do it. So it's gonna take the likes of some of our Japanese friends and spinners who make all the machinery to come up with newer machinery to spin hemp. And then there'll be a massive, massive sort of revolution. But already they've come up with a new cottonized version where they mix a little bit of cotton in it. And our Chinese friends are the, are the best at, at producing hemp, but our Pakistani friends are not too far behind. Obviously in like Benelux region, there's a lot of hemp too, but the best producers of hemp are probably our Chinese friends. But there's a lot of racism against it. There's a lot of people against it for odd reasons and for political reasons. But um, but the, obviously the Venelux stuff is also fine too. But if you end up buying a hemp gene, most likely the, the hemp has come from, come from China. There's two main things that are slightly against it at the moment. And it's because the process of how they extract the bast, the bast fiber, the, the fiber comes from the stalk. Um, they, uh, there's a mechanical process and there's a chemical process. So. Uh, no one's really sharing how they do it. That's the issue. So and obviously for us as designers and creative people, we want to know exactly where, how they're processing this fiber because we can make a, a conscious decision if we're going to use it or not. So if you're going to pick any fiber, you ask simple questions going, how have you processed that hemp? And then they'll tell you, or they won't tell you. If they don't tell you, you don't use it. So, but, but overall hemp is amazing for all the attributes it saves with the earth. It can be grown in pretty much any like environment. Um, it has, doesn't use hardly any pest, pesticides. 
it, it, it uses two thirds less water than cotton. If you, if you have a, a cotton denim garment and a hemp based garment, it's two thirds less. Um, and not only that, hemp is amazing. It, it takes toxins out of the earth. It's unbelievable. And it's just had a lot of propaganda against it. And hopefully we're gonna use it more. Hopefully that's answered your question. I think Holly has had her hand up for a little while. So we'll go, for, go for it, Holly. Hey, thank you so much. It was super, super interesting and really fantastic to see your process and uh, kind of thoughts behind it as well. Um, I had a question about, did you do uh, or do you have plans to do any kind of comparisons in terms of the amount of waste that similar styles that are conventionally designed in comparison to what you do in terms of waste, but also yield? A very good question i think that's a good good idea i think what i could do next is take the same fabrics and put i could put a conventional pattern against it it's the same and then do an analysis maybe i can weigh the fabric afterwards and work out what percentage was left left over very easy subject to do just a matter of uh, time but yeah i think that's a quite a clever thing to move this collection forward i personally want to do workshops with these fabrics and I, i've asked our friends at cone then they're not here anymore so i can talk about it but basically i've said i'm very open about um, um, sending the fabric to any designer who wants to use it, sending them the, the pattern already lasered on, on, on it. And then I do a masterclass on Zoom and we for six hours do this exact style step by step. So I think we're going to hopefully do one uh, in the next few months. It's just finding the time and the slot to do it. But I know our friends at Cone are, are interested. It's just it's more of a logistical thing because I want to make sure that if you get this pack, you get the thread, you get the buttons. So it's just a more of a logistical n nightmare. So, and I know our friends at Cone are very interested. If not, I'll probably do it and I'll do it myself, but I have to do it because the patterns don't, don't belong to me. They belong to Cone. I did this collection for Cone. They paid me to do it. So the collection is actually a Cone collection designed by Engine. But, um, but they're very cool and they'll probably happily do it. So watch this space and I'll probably do it with our, with, with our friends here. So, yeah. Fantastic. Cool. <laughs> Amazing. I think that directly ties to a question from Sheena Black. Are your patterns avail are your pattern images available? It would be fun to play around with these ideas. So I think that kind of answers that question, hopefully in the future. <laughs> I think so. I, I've I've I'm always um if you know about my brand and how I work, I'm always about transparency. I give away all my patterns. I'm one of these, I've been doing it for more than 10 years, how I how that way, this way of working. And obviously I know our friends at Cone are very open to it. Um they just want to make sure that it gets a bigger reach. You know, we're going to be presenting this collection again in uh, April in Amsterdam at Kingpin Show. So that's going to be quite awesome. So another, because we released this collection o over COVID. It didn't get the attention that it deserved, which is a real shame. You know, the, I think one of the most advanced collections I've ever done, and, and it didn't get hardly any, any attention. So that's why I was like saying, how can we get more people to know about it? And so, so I think, um, it, but now more people are doing zero waste inspired collections, whether or not they'll be transparent like I have about, how difficult I found it, or oh, I was annoyed by this the fabric, it was too wide or whatever. But there's no reason why we can't develop fabrics that are different widths to fit these patterns as well. So there's, there's different ways of looking at it, but sharing patterns, I'm open to do it. I just have to speak to our friends at Cone. Um, I'm, I'm planning to like digitize all these patterns anyway, but I find, I don't know, maybe Danielle, you can ask, you can, you can help me with this. If I've got a perfect pattern for, I don't know, for a certain width fabric, scaling it up to a different fabric, you, you start again, no, you start from scratch nearly. So Sometimes um, whether or not I, I, someone, someone pays us to just do every variant possible from 73 centimeters all the way up to 150 of the same pant, or we create an algorithm that does it for us, that's probably the next step. So, yeah. Great, thanks um, so much. So the next question is, what are the challenges to make zero waste pattern cutting a commercial reality? And we do have Danielle here who's currently developing uh, or has a manufacturing, zero waste manufacturing site in Brooklyn, who also can probably comment on that as well. But yeah, um, what are the challenges with making, um, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll just, uh, Daniel, do you wanna go first? And then I can say, you can go first. Sure. Um, I'd say the main challenges stem from the top down. The main thing is a misconception about what zero waste design is. There's so many different um, lenses of that now, whether it is through pattern cutting, through washing, through dyeing, through uh, life cycle analysis. So um, that's like the first hurdle to jump through. And then the second one is misconception that zero waste design has to be boxy and huge and eco chic, like everything gray, you know, that kind of uh, preconceived notion is really difficult to get around. Um, I would say 
in terms of the actual like commercial production of garments, it does require that um, your production flow is kind of backwards because you know the designer usually passes off to a tech developer who makes a pattern, who works at the factory to get it produced. And in order for zero waste design to work, though all of those people have to kind of either be working intrinsically or all be the same person or have people who are all working on the project together. Um, so if you get that perfect design and you're ready to get it produced, even still finding a manufacturer who's willing to work on a project like this is quite difficult, to be honest. Uh, that's why we opened Decode MFG because it takes a lot of time to just like set up machinery differently or um, understand how things flow in and out of the factory differently. The actual like steps, like Mosin was saying, are exactly the same. Sewing, like, you know, sewing one thing to another. Uh, so that function of it doesn't change, but it's the way that people interact with it um, and get on board with it that's a bit different. Um, so I can follow up on that if needed, but Mosin, back to you. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I think um, whenever I speak to my fellow denim designers, I'm a part of this group of denim designers and WhatsApp and, you know, some people are very open to the idea, but then some of them are like going, it might look hideous, it won't work. Or, you know, or I've had lots of um, not angry exchanges, but people actually saying, I'm not sure about this, it's going to look hideous and it's just, a, it's just a trend. And I went, dude, it's not a trend, it's just a different way of thinking of how you do a collection. And, you know, uh, after doing this exercise for a, three or four months when I did it, um, I came to the conclusion that every single collection I design, I need to have a go at doing at least one or two zero waste garments using that fabric. I've come to the conclusion now, there's no, it will be silly for me not to try it. Because if I can avoid wastage, even for a client or for, or for a mill, because I, I design collections still for big brands too. So it's just convincing and, and, and Daniel's right. It's, it's a business case. A lot of these companies, they have business units who work out if it's, it's a for plausible reason to, to, to actually, actually do this or, There'll be someone who might argue argue with you going, well, we can't use cotton thread because it's our policy to only use poly cotton. And I was like, dude, if you use poly cotton, you can't recycle this garment. Well, you can, you can be naughty and you can, but most, most recyclers that I visited, they cut the garment out. They cut bits out of the garment and avoid the thread. So if you can openly say on the garment, 100% cotton thread, fully recyclable. So it's about changing the mindset, changing some of the, the, uh, the ways that we're working and, um, and, um, telling that story in a different way, but making people aware that this garment can be thrown in a landfill and it's fine also. But um, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Wilson. Um, the next question is, was the five pocket jeans dyed with rust? Dyed with rust? That would be, that's a Victoria question. I know they have used rust before in my collections. Um, Victoria, if you're still there, maybe you can ask, you can answer that question. Uh, yeah, sorry. Mm, but I didn't understand it. Oh, the question was, <laughs> did you did they use rust and 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 you know I know you've used sand and dirt sometimes to some make some of these collections, but some of the washing treatments and that you did on the garments that you did, did you include rust on any of them? Rust is for metal, you know, when you get rust, rusty butter, rusty nails and things. Did you use rust? I think you had any. Sorry, it's still uh, no, because okay, I don't, don't get worry. this word. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't worry at all. No, um. I can handle my heart say that they have done stuff like that before. Yeah, they have done. But thing is, it's 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 okay as well if you use natural or not natural sort of minerals that are there. And you know, as long as you make it very very clear. But um, I don't know. Was that person against you using rust? I know like Geology don't have a, have a philosophy or a way of using rust. They don't use rust. They use other more sustainable ways of working. But they have done for me on concept collections, of course. The next question is, could you say that hemp has thicker and coarser texture and feel to it in comparison to cotton or cotton blends? Ah, so now this, this person obviously hasn't touched a, a cottonized garment yet. So who's asking this question? Um, if you look at a cottonized garment, I, I can probably find a slide of it right now, probably take me a minute finding it. It looks like cotton. This is hemp, but it's cotton. It's been mixed in. Obviously the wet spun hemp, the older style hemp. So if you buy uh, twine from the gardening center, That'll be hemp, that'll be the old style. The newer type of style, they've merged a little bit of cotton with it and they've spun it, they've done something to it and it feels amazingly soft. And um, so that's the type of, of hemp that they're using, but you still get um, wet, wet spun hemp too in a lot of garments. So uh, to be honest, in the denim world, we don't mind that slight scratchiness, to be honest. We know after a certain amount of time, it becomes soft, becomes softer and you break it in. So um, I'm not against the scratchiness. I'm one of these people that look scratchy. And so, um, but for a commercial sense, it'll be a more, the, the idea is, is to make a garment using no cotton and no polyester, that's the idea. And it, it looks like a garment that would have been made in the sixties. That's really the, the idea here. 
and um, it will be a in like replacement. That's ideally what we should be doing. Thanks, Milton. Just to let everyone know we are kind of at that hour point now. If you need to go, like, feel free to do that. Um, you can follow up and watch the rest of the Q&A session on replay. I think Milton's happy to stick around for a bit more. And I think we've got something like 14 questions or something still. We'll just try and get through as many as we can. Um, so uh, next question, so inspiring. I'm interested in your opinion on button materials and their relative sustainability. And that's from Marquetta. Yeah, um, to be honest, um, having um, buttons that you can take off and uh, is not a new thing. Actually, half of these things that I'm doing are not new. Well, one piece fly, screw on buttons, buttons with rings on the back. These are all things that were done in the early 1900s or even earlier. So only because jackets and things, you didn't wash them very often, but you had to take the buttons off. So they had removable buttons. So it's, so it's nothing new here. It's just, um, it's just changing that mindset in developing a button like that for a modern collection. And most of the people that I show it to, most of the younger designers who are still at college and stuff, they go, this is so cool. I've never seen this before. And I'm like, dude, if you, if you go vintage hunting, you've come across this stuff all the time. So it's actually um, showing it to younger people and younger developers and business unit people and convincing them, hey, let's develop a button that can be screwed off. And um, it's, it's better for everyone. So yeah, but, and also using natural uh, materials, especially um, is not, nothing new also like shell material or, or wood or whatever. These things are also been around for a very long time. And many people have even made 3D buttons that are made from um, a material that can completely dis disappear. So it's just exploring what you want to do. I still wanted to use a metal button. I wanted to have, I wanted to develop a collection that a Levi's could buy into and it would still look like a Levi's garment. I didn't want it to look like a, a fancy collection I want it to look like a normal everyday garment that even you can buy at, tes buy at Tesco's, but actually it's fully bi 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 biodegradable. That was my task. Amazing. Okay, we have a next question or kind of also comment from Maureen. She says she'd be super interested to hear more about what you'd like, what you would look for in a zero waste related algorithm. If not today, then in the future. Uh, my partner is a computer scientist and we've been brainstorming on this theme for a few months. We think it's a piece of technology that would definitely advance the movement. So I, I have actually come up with an alg algorithm. I just haven't released it yet. Um, so I, um, I have come up with a way of fitting um, a pant on practically any width. Um, and um, yeah, it's like one of these crazy things that it just changes when you just update the. So it's just, yeah, it's, I've done a little animation, but I haven't fully done it properly. But um, it's something that I might release soon. Um, I don't mind if someone beats it, be, be, beats me to it. It's nothing new. People have been talking about it for a long, long time, and someone might have already pay, patented it without me knowing. But um, as I said, I'm not too uh, precious about these types of things. I just want someone, someone to do it. So if it's me or someone else or a young designer who's 18 years old, when I meet younger people, they always tell me, "Why aren't we doing this as standard?" That's oh, that's honestly. I teach at four or five of the biggest colleges in like the UK. The response is always the same. I want to only do zero waste. This is most of the time the, the answer. So, but they're saying, but I'm not allowed to. I have to do this, whatever it is. So, hopefully, more colleges will be open to doing a zero waste philosophy collection, be it for three months or whatever, or two months like normal collections are. And then uh, we get some really talented people uh, tackling the problem with lots of time. Because us as creative people who work for a living, it, it's a luxury to design a collection like this and get paid for it. So, yeah. I'm actually just looking through. I think there's actually just a lot of comments. I thought there were questions, but um, Sheena says, really happy to hear about the secrecy surrounding hemp processing that doesn't use chemicals. I've been trying to find out how hemp is processed. I work a lot with stinging nettle, trying to figure out how to make cloth out in an, an expedient manner. Knowing how hemp is processed would really help. Um, uh, a lot of our Pakistani friends and Chinese friends will share. I know there's a chemical process that our friends in China do, but they also do a mechanical process. And I'm more in favor of the mechanical process. Um, I will be traveling, uh, I haven't been traveling for two years, but I, I will get over to Pakistan and China, hopefully at the end of this year, and I will video the process and show everyone. So um, yeah, but it's, they're not too secretive. They just, you know, they say it's their intellectual property, but it's not, it's common knowledge how they do it, but I just haven't seen a video of them doing it. So yeah. Holly also left a comment saying, um, I love your comment about how technology for spinning yarn has focused on cotton and how that has impact, impacted on what we use, what we accept as standard and aesthetics. And then we measure hemp against cotton when cotton has been the focus of technology development for the last 
hundred plus years. Yeah, um, um, uh, cotton's got a, a, a two hundred year head start in spinning tech technology. It will take it will only take a mill to do it. It will take a, a Levi's or a Gap to say we're going to invest. But these companies they don't invest like that. They go to a mill like artistic milliners or one big mill that will supply them the fiber, and they'll say we want to invest in hemp. And then artistic milliners will then hire the guys at like um the guys in china or like japan the spinning guys to make a machine to spin and it, it's a five ten year twenty year process of inventing new machinery but the good thing is hemp has been legalized now in, in most countries for working and to using the yarn it's going to be the biggest thing that's going to happen that and like tensile that you have <laughs> so yeah Great, I think that's all the questions in the chat. I don't know if anyone else has a question they just want to kind of speak up um, and ask Mosin before we close. Oh, I've got Liz. one more video I, I could show for a couple of minutes. Liz, I think, has a question. Oh, go for it. Yeah, hello. Is this the first, uh, is this the first zero waste or zero waste inspired denim collection in the world? Yes and no. I know for a fact that Levi's in the past, back in uh, the, the red collections, we're talking 99, 2002, 2003, they did do a zero waste philosophy collection, but they never advertised it as zero waste. So um, many people have done it. And, but I think zero waste has, conno has, conno has connotations, as like Danielle says, of like, oh, it's it, whatever it is. So they decided the marketing department decided not to advertise it as zero waste, even though they did a pattern that fit their fabric exactly. So um, it's nothing new. I think this might this might be one of the first collections uh, that we've explored like this uh, openly. And, um, and the whole reason that I got employed by Cone to do it is to make collections for their showroom. So a designer from Abercrombie or whatever Levi's comes in and go, that's cool. So it's just there to inspire fire people. That's all. That's all I do now, and it's really fun. So um, but I'm not the first to do it, but I'm probably the first to do it in this way where I've openly shared what I've done. So yeah. Um. Great. We have another question. Um, have you used hemp blended with silk? I haven't personally, but I know a lot of mills have explored it. A lot of mills are exploring everything to do with hemp and what it can be spun with, including tensile, lyocell, to even different types of cottons. Um, you know, cotton's amazing. It grows all over the world in, in, in different staple lengths, um, different uh, consumptions of water. There's many experimentations in the world of spinning. I call it cotton concepts where you mix different things all around the world. And um, but half the time you develop these new fibers, but they're just too expensive. You know, um, so, you know, I developed a denim which used feathers, for instance, you know, so from the byproduct of the meat industry, everyone thought it was like disgusting. And I'm like, well, is it if it's processed and cleaned? It's like a warm feeling denim instead of using a puffer jacket. You know, so it's just changing the mindset of how. And I remember there was a, a silk denim made with spider silk or whatever. So everyone's experimenting. With different, um, even tensile made a denim made out of um, orange peel. You can you can get fiber from anything to be honest, like anything, and you can spin it. But it's just convincing a mill and convincing a spinner to do it, and in a way that it's commercial. And half the time, these new technologies are just too expensive. That uh, you know, hemp right now I believe is like two times more expensive than cotton. That's why you don't get 100% hemp garments yet. It just doesn't. It's just too expensive. It wouldn't be commercial enough. Obviously, the likes of Prada or some of these more high-end brands that can afford a a $30 fabric, sure can use it, but the likes of a, a, a Levi's at $1.70 or whatever, or a Primark or a Next or Gap, no. But they are experimenting with hemp, of course, but at the five to 20 to 30% 30, 30 range. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> Can I jump in and ask a question? Mm. Um, so I wanted to know for you personally, what was the most frustrating thing about doing a zero waste collection? Because I know a lot of people get very frustrated in the process um, and it can be a deterrent uh, for future things but I wanted to know for you from your experience what was the most frustrating thing and will that deter you uh, going forward you tell me I, I like puzzles I'm a bit like you like Danielle I'm just I'm just um, but I like a little challenge and and I've always liked uh, pattern cutting I, I really I always did the most complicated pattern cutting as a student 25 years ago and I really enjoyed it but I enjoy doing patterns that are complicated but from far away they look simple so that's the goal, how my, my own way of working. When you look up close, you're like, holy shit, there's loads going on or whatever. So um, but no, um, I was slightly frustrated that some of the fabrics I had, I couldn't manage to make it work. In it, it, I was constricted by time. I, was, I, was, I had a time limit to design this collection. As I kept on saying, 
if I had another go at doing the pattern again, I'll probably spend, you know, and then these patterns didn't take me long to do. We're talking only a few hours work on pattern cutting, making it probably took a half a day to make. And then, but I had to do nine others at the same time over a space of a week. So, you know, it's, it's one of these things. It's just time and money. Um, I, I wish I could just hire a group of young designers and just give them the challenge of, uh, these are the 15 fabrics that Levi's use that are the commercial ones they use design a collection that has no waste in it and then we'll present it to Levi's for instance so it's like having a challenge like that would be quite awesome and it will benefit everyone if we did it or we figured out we did a survey and we figured out what are the best selling fabrics and their whips and we designed garments everyday garments in those whips and then shared it and then literally don't worry about um, patenting it but we shared it to all the major brands and then you know I always say every major brand now should have some a zero waste corner where they've said this is our best selling fabric and we're, we're going to have a go at doing it. So uh, I don't know, it's, it's going to take a, someone with vision to do it. Um, I don't know, I, I'm, there's only so much I can talk about, but I'm not in the positions of power where I can influence the likes of a, of a, of a VP at Levi's, May, maybe, but um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but a little bit frustrated that I couldn't, couldn't make it work in the time that I had, that's all. But I know I'm going to do more of it in going forward, so I'm quite excited. Mm. Um. Okay, we'll take maybe one kind of last comment here and then wrap up. Um, so Connor, who just joined late um, because of the time difference, which I was a bit worried because I know people joining from North America, there's this like weird gap right now between the time change. So sorry um, for you missing the call, but the replay will be there for you, Connor. Um, but he says that um, they're designing zero waste jeans for their final year project. It's been a challenge to actually achieve that. I've tried to use rectangles to jigsaw a pair together um but it seems hard to make it fit and to use up all the fabric um i think they're just kind of looking for maybe a bit of feedback on Con yeah I connor i so connor i didn't i didn't look at all of our friends here's work too closely when i did my collection i didn't look at holly's book too closely i didn't look at what danielle was doing uh, i wanted to explore doing zero waste on my own actually because i i'm 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 i i thought I'm a creative pattern cutter, surely I can come up with my own own method. So that's what I did. Not that I wasn't ashamed of copying anyone. I just wanted to have a go myself. So I didn't do the method with rectangles or just using rectangles and making it work. Uh, I wanted to have a garment that looked like a normal garment. That was, I'm a commercial designer now, even though I do creative pattern cutting. But at the end of the day, I, I serve a purpose to the industry to make very commercial collections that, that are washed, that are using commercial fabric. So I, I tried my hardest to fit a regular pattern and then the belt loops I could manipulate and the pockets I could have skewed. And I just did it like that. That was my way of working. So each to their own, but there's no reason why just look at lots of other people's work that, that we all share garments for this purpose. So other people can learn from them and hopefully make them better. So um, that's my way. I don't know if I helped you or not, but, but by all means, look at this, um, look, at the, look at the video again and print screen these patterns and try and explore how I did it and have a look at Holly's book and look at some of like Danielle's work and, you know, you might come up something that we've that we've all missed so you know which would be quite awesome right so um but yeah amazing thank you thanks everyone for coming tonight as well um Mosin, do you want to just con um share your kind of contact details your instagram and stuff for people who might want to follow you or get in touch? yeah yeah um it's give me one second i'll have a little slide up right there i'm going to find a slide there for you that will be helpful okay. but um I've got one last video I can share. It's like a minute long of me talking about the collection, which might, okay. might be a nice way to end off. And I want to also say that all these videos that you saw are all directed by my lovely wife, Sadia. Poor thing never gets credited at all, but she's <laughs> half of half of Enzyme actually. And I'm the one who gets a lot of the, a lot of the, oh, well, well done stuff. But actually Sadia is a lot. And anyone who works with us knows it's mostly Sadia. So it's quite funny actually. But, um, but she was involved in, um, in the graphic design of this project. So let me just pull up this slide. I'll be just another minute. And then, um, and then it'll be a final slide to end off. And then I'll show a little video as well, which will be awesome for you guys to see. So another minute of me talking about the collection. And I think that's a, a, probably a nice way to end, end off this um, collection. So just give me one second. Um, I've got a denim history masterclass that I do, but you can find me on Endrime. Uh, on Instagram, I've got Endrime, denim history, my own name, Mawson Sarsajid, and um, Endrime Studio as well. So I have four Instagrams, which is quite nuts. You probably think, why has he got four Instagrams? It's only because I do so much work with students. Uh, I do so much work with my brand and so much work as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a consultant. I had to have different Instagrams for that purpose. Otherwise it gets really messy seeing pictures of my garden in my 
I mean, no, Insta, my, my, my account for work. So, um, okay, I found, I found it now. Just give me just a lovely discussion. And, and I want to thank you again for inviting me and inviting Cone and our friends at like Genealogia to be a part of this. And um, I don't think this is a trend at all. So I think this is a super important, what we're all exploring, like kind of like sort of like sort of like together. And I think more people need to experiment or at least go on their own journey to do it, personally speaking. And I think if every major denim brand at least did one or two zero waste garments based on their best selling fabrics i think it's only a good thing so i'm just i've nearly found that video that i'm going to show you um it was such an honor for me and sadia to work on this zero waste collection for cone together with our friends at genealogia i've always as a designer tried my hardest to eliminate waste even from the very beginning don't like the way things are finished so for me it was always about the cleanest way to possibly make a jean and so I've always been doing some essences of zero waste when it comes to the one piece fly or doing a clean waist, waistband. It was a real pleasure to explore properly doing a zero waste collection and the range of fabrics that Cone had given us was amazing as well. These were awesome fabrics that were all different whips. It was a real learning curve for me because every single fabric is in theory a different pattern so you can have the same gene but you have to do different details on every fabric to make it fit accordingly so it was really interesting for me to explore this concept because we got a few garments looking amazingly well with hardly no waste and then some of them we were still having some issues and so the real breakthrough came when I managed to figure out a way of fitting a pattern piece on pretty much any type of fabric and that was amazing so there are rules in path pattern cutting and the way I got around it was by putting darts in really unusual places. And it was just awesome. It was such a, a fun experience uh, pattern cutting this actual collection. And then sewing it, I made sure that we followed through. We put circle bar tacks on everything down to the trims as well. We got screw on buttons from our friends at like Jarvid Brothers. AE thread gave us 100% cotton thread. It just came together so beautifully well. And, you know, not only that, that Genealogia did such a fantastic job washing the actual collection too. But I think Zero Waste for me is something that I'm going to be exploring for many years to come. And it was an absolute pleasure to, to start this process with our friends at Cone. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah. any more questions? <laughs> Shall we end, end it here? So, yeah. Thank you so much again for letting me speak and being a part of this. And um, I'm very honoured to to speak with you guys as well, and especially being with really talented people that I've got books on. So, yeah, really, really nice. Thank, thank you so much, Mosen. We really appreciate you taking the time. And yeah, your project is just so inspiring. You've obviously got so much passion for denim, and um, we're really grateful that you've come and shared with our community as well. So, um, you'll hear more about Mosen in the coming you know, months and stuff on our platform too. So just keep keep an eye out. Um, thanks everyone. And remember you can book into the next community call, which is about building community and networks. Um, so hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you to like, Victoria and Perrette for joining from Gene Lodger and Cohen. Thank you. Thank you, you, thank, you, thank you for having Congratulations. Bye thank guys. You. Bye. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye.